<laughs> you talk about my shit, look at your shit, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You ever heard somebody say, boy, you need to get your shit together? Get your shit out the street, <laughs> right? I mean, that's, it's, it's the same emotional stuff. Um, so God comes to Adam and says, Adam, where are you? And what did Adam say? Yeah. yeah, Adam didn't even respond to the question. He said, it's this woman you made me. And Eve said, well, it was the snake, did it? And the snake didn't have a leg to stand on, you know. I mean, you know. No. One of the things about waking up to who God wants you to be in these, these things we're talking about is when you find yourself blaming other folks, uh, you can, if you're awake and breathing a little bit and, and, and realize that you're blaming, you can know that there's some shame issue getting kicked up. Does that make any sense? Yeah. You know? um, and that's very important. That's a very powerful place to be because when there's shame there, that's where God's trying to work. Shame keeps us hidden and um, keeps us wanting to uh, hide and push people away. Huh? So... And then God says, look, boy, um, why are you hiding in the bushes? And he said, we were, Saul says we were naked and ashamed. And he goes, well, who told you that? You know, because nothing happened except the way they saw themselves. <coughs> they didn't die. They didn't, because that was their worry in their mind. They thought they were going to die or whatever, but they didn't, physically anyway. What did die was their relationship to the world and themselves and each other and God. It was broken and um, and shame created fear and fear created ridiculous behaviors that caused them to hide themselves. So God's intervention according to the story was to create a better covering. You know, he went and sacrificed the animal and got him some draws that wouldn't wear out so quick. You know. The issue is sometimes we try to put on a different covering without dealing with the fig leaves. Right? Try to cover it up with saying the right words, acting certain ways. You know, I was saying motherfucker last week, but now I'm saying I love Jesus this week, so I'm good. <laughs> you know. Um, but many times just changing our outward behavior um, doesn't affect this stuff in here. Because I can learn new vocabulary, new cultures, um, and rise to the top of it and become the, the one that teaches everybody about everything. You know? I mean, I could have studied YouTubes and told you exactly how to take a ball joint out. Right? But until I mashed my finger and hit my head, I really didn't know nothing about it. Until I spent 15, 16 hours working on that truck, I didn't know what I was talking about. Even though I could have sounded very convincing. You understand what I'm saying? It's getting in there and sweating and messing up and learning by messing up that we actually become, begin to know something. You know, and then you don't have to believe no more because you know it. <laughs> you know? What did Jesus say about the truth? You will believe the truth and the truth will set you free. He said what he said. No, that ain't what he said. Know the truth. You will know the truth. Mm. And the truth will set you free. You know? So, because um, I could wear, I could have 250, what, $2,500 Armani suit. Some Egyptian cotton with French cuffs, some diamond little studs, nice Italian tie, some crocodile loafers, you know, 
go to uh, Belmar and buy me some or Saks and buy me some good perfume. But if I got fig leaves in my drawers, it don't, really don't mind. You know, because we can cover all our stuff up with religion or whatever. Um, but if we still have fig leaves in our drawers, we ain't nothing happened. That's you know? how most of us learned to just out doing our deal with becoming a chameleon, just to fit in mm -hmm. wherever we went so we could do what we would do. Yes, sir. But we still had that problem. Yes, sir. And I would tell you, my friend, that that is the human condition. You know, I think I said last week, we don't get a special t-shirt because we crackheads. Right. You know, because yeah. for all are crackheads and falling short of the glory of God. The issue is, what am I addicted to? Right. You know, and the old, especially in the Old Testament, they would talk about idolatry or trusting in gods that are no gods. I mean, that's addiction. That's the addiction process, and it's shame based, most of it. That's why we hide. That's why we, uh, when we're in our addiction, we hang out with other doing. Um, but that's no trust, that's no love. We trust them because we got shit on them and they got shit on us. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? Uh, and when we're in some kind of addiction, we typically um, retreat from folks many times that really love us, that'll tell us the truth, that'll say, What's up with you? And you're like, They'll say, you got shit in your pants. And you'll go, well, what about your shit? You need to leave my shit alone. You can handle your shit, you know. Right, boy? Do you understand what I'm talking about? You know? Um, is that red light still on? Beautiful thing. Um, shame is what we're talking about. And as I come up in church, I heard a lot of sermons about sin, but not a whole lot of them about shame. But as I understood, you know, read the Bible, it talked about Jesus came to redeem what our sin and our shame. Because sin basically is just the symptoms of the shame, you know. Um, it's more of a existential. Um, state of being in terms of being disconnected from ourselves and others God um, sin's not necessarily particular behaviors because even Paul said all things are lawful for me I can do anything I want it's just not all things are profitable I'll pick at y'all sometime God ain't mad at you because you shot up heroin <laughs> I mean that's lawful for you if you I mean it's fine uh, if that's really what you want to do. God's not going, you bad boy, for doing that. Um, and if you can live a productive, happy, peaceful life doing that, I would suggest knock yourself out. But don't not do it because somebody told you it's bad. Do you understand that it's a very different issue um, the only reason not to do it is that it's not profitable. It doesn't make you work and function well. That's right. Right? There's no condemnation. It's just like um, if I have a habit of rubbing the back of my leg with a cheese grater, God's not going to be mad at me. But every time I come and say, Dear Lord, heal my leg, he's going to say, Well, stop rubbing the back of your leg with a cheese grater, retard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how many times do you want me to fix you? You know, no. <laughs> do you understand the difference? It's not. Because that condemnation is, is rooted in shame, and there is no condemnation. Okay? God just wants to clean us up and make us function like He wants us to function. Not to be mad at us or treat us like our uh, narcissistic fathers or our borderline mamas or, <laughs> you know. So many times we project our experience of 
early authority, typically our parents, whether they were there or not or however they acted, we project that onto that's how God is. And that ain't. You know? I'm a father, but God's not like me. If I function every once in a while like a father's supposed to function, then I'm moving toward what God is. But I'm glad God is a better father than I am. Right? But somehow, he might got some cool kids. They got a good mom, I guess that's what it is. It was redemptive for them. Um, yourself grow by pulling on you any more than the, you can make those tomato plants grow by pulling on the vines All right. right tomato plants job is to just put down roots and reach for the sun not to go well I'm wondering if I'm okay you know, you know. to move deeply into uh, where they're planted Can you imagine trying to grow tomatoes with egos? I wonder, should I go up this place or that place? I don't know. It, you know, if I do this and it's going to mess up over here. and it, you know. Just relax. Yes. Grow. Handle today, today. What is before you. Don't be... Try to find five minutes, maybe in 30 second in increments this day, when you're not thinking about yesterday or worried about tomorrow. That's our instruction from Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Be anxious for nothing. Because anxiety is what kills us. Anxiety feeds our ego. Anxiety uh, makes us want to hide in the bushes with a load on. Right? <clears throat> Let it wash over you. Do what you can do something about in the moment. That's all you got is a moment anyway. It comes what? It's at the moment. That's all you feel is shame and regret and, and pain. And well, then feel it. You know, you hear a lot about surrender. And, mm -hmm. and um, from a person who thought they, they knew what surrender was, and now you're finding out you really don't have a clue what it even looks like. Well, baby, you remember when, when you was talking a while ago, and um, could, first thing I would say is there's no shame in falling down again. Okay, because you made progress from when you first came in here, all right? You're less retarded now than you were when I first met you. You're less ignorant, Amen. okay? Now, and again, so you, last week I talked about those two continuum. Well, I, I, fucked, I screwed up, so I ain't worth shit, which is, you would understand this, uh, it's a lie from the devil, okay? But I noticed your response to a lot of that was you went from I ain't no good to, I mean, you wrote four or five hundred pages before you got out of here. And, and your ego and your knowing, and, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. But it was, we see in part and know in part. And all the things that we think we know, most of it's going to be gone anyway. You know? Um, one of the things that I've been doing for the last few months is trying to encourage folks to breathe, be still, and know I'm God. Okay? And your grief, 
Um, many times may trigger anxiety. It'll make you want to get in your ego and figure it all out. Well, if I don't know any, everything, then I must be sh worth shit. Right? You know what I'm talking about? That's that bipolar stuff. Okay? Not in the clinical sense. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, and you are good, or you are um, loved, not because of what you do, not because you created yourself. You are loved already. You're accepted already. It's just our egos and our programming from childhood many times tell us different. That's a lie. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Um, and my guess is, baby, that um, this pattern relates to your early childhood stuff. And how you were treated by the authority figures in your life. You know? Right? Or did, yes, no, I don't know. You know? And it has very little to do with God. It has to do with breaking free uh, from those old programs and those old lies uh, that keep us trapped. Okay? And once you break three of those, uh, you'll learn some new ones later. Because it doesn't stop. Um, Is it normal to feel closer to him when I'm broken than when I'm not? Um, did you feel closer to one of your parents after you got an ass woman? Hmm? I used to. My daddy uh, taught hand-to-hand -hand combat in Korea. <laughs> and he got that job because when he was training, he broke the instructor's collarbone. Um, so my father wasn't real... Um, in, open, intimate, you know. If I made touchdowns or whatever, then we was whatever. Um, and the only time that I remember feeling close to him was after he whooped my ass. Anybody understand that? Yeah, because you got that attention. You got that bond. Yeah. And I think, you know, thinking back on it, he didn't really want to do that. Sometimes he did. I mean, he striped me up down one time because I didn't get my hair cut short enough. Maybe that's why I got long hair now. <laughs> um, see? <laughs> and he was mad probably at Mama. And the water well was broke. And we was trying to fix the water well. And I came home. Beat the snot out of me. And I went to school. We was in PE. It was eighth grade. It wasn't a, it was a different world. I was all strapped up and showed one of my teacher, and he go, well, all right. 